Hello everyone, Reza here. In today's video, I will show you how to build multi-step approval workflows or serial approval workflows. The approval flow that we will build will ensure that both the number of approvers and the sequence of the approvers are dynamic based upon specific criteria. So let's check it out in action. The use case here is expense reporting. I have a list in SharePoint wherein users can enter their expense details. I have a column called approval status of type choice. I have four choices defined, new, pending, approved, rejected. The default value is new. Now to build multi-step or serial approvals, the way we typically build this is in Power Automate, since I need the flow to begin, when a new item is created, I will use the automated cloud flow. When an item is created trigger, we'll connect it to my site and list. Now to create multi-step approvals, we will use the start and wait for an approval action. This approval needs to go through approvers serially. If we look at the approval type, all the four options that are provided here, none of them apply the approval action to your approvers in a serial fashion. And in order to build this pattern, we add additional start and wait for an approval action. So for example, when this process begins, for the first approval action, I will select one approver. So I'll pick first to respond. And let's say this is my expense approver one. And here I pick Reza as the approver. Then we check the outcome of the approval by adding a condition, and checking the outcome property if it is equal to approve. If yes, then we want to go to the second step of the approval. So once again, we use start and wait for an approval. So this will be my expense approver two. Let's say my process requires Sarah to be the second approver. Once again, add a condition to check the decision that Sarah has made. I'll pick the outcome. If it's equal to approve, I want to move ahead to maybe the third approver in sequence and so on and so forth. Now this pattern of adding an approval action, then checking the output, then based on that starting a second action and so on and so forth is good if you have a defined list of approvers. So the pattern that I will be showcasing now is ideal for dynamic multi-step or serial approvals. As I need an array of my approvers. In this case, I'll add a new step and I will initialize a variable. I'll pick the type array and in here, I will define my approvers. So a simple array that has the email addresses of my approvers in the order in which they need to have the task assigned to them. Now, once the item is created in my expenses list, the first step is I want to go ahead and update the status of the item. So I'll pick the update item action. For the identity, I'll pick the ID from the trigger. Any mandatory fields, I would have to refill in. So I'll just select the dynamic content from the trigger itself. And the approval status value, I will set this to pending because I will be starting the approval process. Now, since this is a multi-part approval, if any one approver rejects it, I would like to set the status to rejected and stop the approval process. That is. Any further approvers in the sequence defined will not be assigned to that approval action. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another variable. I'll call this var status. The type would be string. I will initialize it to pending. Now comes the part of serially assigning the approval action to the approvers in the order in which they are defined in this array. I will add and apply to each loop. Here, I need an array. I have an array of my approvers. I'll just pick that variable. I need to start the approval action only if this variable is not equal to the value rejected. Now, we will set that variable to reject it inside this for loop if any of those approvers in sequence, once they get the task assigned, reject the approval. I'll add an action and add a condition. And the condition is that the status variable should not be equal to rejected. 
In the yes branch, I will add the start and wait for an approval action. I'll pick first to respond. I'll call this expense approval for, and I will pick the title. Now, who do you want to assign this task to? This I want to assign to the approver, the information for which is already available for me inside this for loop since I'm looping through my array of approvers. So to get the current item value in assign to, I will go to expression and use the expression item. I can provide some details about the approval. I'll add a link to the item. Now, the moment the flow reaches this point, the first approver in my approvers array will get an approval task and the flow will wait for that user's response. Right after this action, I need to check the response that the user has made. So I'll add a condition and I will check the outcome of this approval. The outcome is equal to approve. Now, if the user rejects it, it will go to the no branch. And in this case, I want to do two things. First, here I will update that same item with the approval status as rejected. And right after this, I will set a variable, which is my status variable to rejected. Now, if it is approved, I would like to set the status to approved only if this is the last approver in my array of approvers. I have to check the index of the current running item in the for loop. So to get that, I will initialize another variable. We'll call this our counter variable. Type integer, start with zero. Now inside the apply to each loop, I would like to increment this counter. So right after my approval action here, I will add an action and use the increment variable action. I can pick my variable counter and I'll increment this by one. Now when an approver approves it, I will add an action, once again a condition, and here I need to check if the length of my array of approvers, and I can do that by going to expression, typing in the function length, and in this it needs a collection or an array, so I will go to dynamic content and pick my variable of approvers. I'll say okay. Here I'll pick where counter. If this matches, that means this is the last approver. And if it is the last approver, I would like to set the status to approved. So once again, I have my update item action. The only difference here is I'm setting the approval status to approved. Now that completes my flow. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'll click save. My approvers here are Reza and Sarah. So I'm logged into SharePoint with the user James. Create a new expense item. So James has put in the expense details. Click save. The status by default is new and once the approval process begins this status will change to pending so the status has changed to pending and our first approver in our array that we had defined in the flow which is reza would have received the approval notification so here's the approval task for reza reza can see all the details and let's say reza goes ahead and approves this and click submit so the approval decision for reza is now logged now the next approver should be assigned the task in sequence and in this case the next approver was Sarah. And here is the approval task that is assigned to Sarah. So Sarah also goes ahead and submits the approval decision. And back to SharePoint, the status has changed to approved. Now this pattern is dynamic in nature. If I need to make a change, all I have to do is just add an additional approver email right here in this array. So here I've plugged in James's email address before Reza and Sarah in my approvers array. So now I'll have a three tier approval process. Let me go ahead and save this flow. So this time signing in as Sarah, Sarah will create a new expense request. Sarah puts in the details and submits the request. The moment the approval process begins, the status changes to pending. And this time the task will be first assigned to James and James receives the first approval email as we can see right here. So James approves this and submits his approval response. The next approver in sequence gets the request. In this case, it's Reza. 
And let's say Reza goes ahead and rejects the request. So now because the status will be changed to rejected, including that variable that we created on the flow, the next approver will not get the task assigned and the entire process would be rejected. We can see that the status here is rejected. The next approver in sequence was Sarah. And if we look at the mailbox for Sarah, there is no approval notification that has gone out for her. That's because no task was ever created. Now let's take another use case. Let's say if the amount is greater than $500, then we do need the user's manager to also approve the request. So in my flow, when I'm creating this array of approvers, right after this, I will add a new step to check to see if the amount is greater than $500. So I'll add a condition, pick the amount. If this is greater than $500, then I would like to append the requester's manager as well as one of the approvers. And the way I can grab the user's manager is, I'll use the Office 365 users connector and use the get manager v2 action. Here, I need the email address of the user. I can get that by picking the created by user's email address. I'll add an action. Here, I will use the append to array variable action. And for my variable of approvers, I can insert the mail of the manager. That gets obtained by the mail property of the get manager action. Now this will append this specific email address at the end of the approvers array. Now since I want the manager to be the first approver, I will remove my value and just keep it an empty array. And right after this condition, I will add an action, run an apply to each loop. And here I will put in those array of approvers. Within this, I will use the append to array variable action. And for that same variable of approvers, I will append the current item. Now let's go ahead and save and test this flow. So I'm logged in as Reza. I'll create a new expense item. The amount that I've plugged in for the expense is greater than $500 in this case. I'll click save. Now once the flow triggers, if you look at the condition, since the amount was greater than $500, We'll go and grab the user's manager. The requester was Raza, manager is Sarah. It will append it to that array variable of approvers. So here's Sarah's email. Then I had my own loop of approvers. And here I was appending the approvers one by one into that variable. Now if you look at the apply to each loop, it's going to run three times. The first task would be the manager's task, which is Sarah. And here's the approval task that gets assigned to Sarah. So same flow pattern, but we've added an additional layer of approval by getting in the user's manager based upon the amount. And now to cap this up with a final demo, make this even more dynamic. My expense types is a lookup column. And based on those expense types, I have a column here called approvers. And this column is a person or group type column in SharePoint that has multiple selections enabled. So here I'm defining my approvers based upon the expense types. For the customer expense type, I have two approvers. For training, I have three. So my number of approvers are changing based on the expense type. Plus, I can even define the sequence of my approvers right here. In this case, it starts with Reza and goes to Sarah. If I ever need to change this, I can just change the sequence right here and click Save. Now it'll go to Sarah and then follow that up by Reza. Now here is my SharePoint list. I've just added some column and view formatting to this. Here is my approval workflow. It triggers when the item is created in the SharePoint list. I have my variable here called status, same as before, I'm setting it to pending. Now to get my approvers array, I'm going ahead and executing a query against my lookup list, which is expense types. And here I have a filter query that says, get me those values where the title is equal to the expense type value that the user has selected for the request. And this, I'm storing it into my array variable of approvers. Now, because the get items action in SharePoint returns an array, 
I know that it will always have one item so I've just gone ahead and added an expression here and at the end I'm using the index 0 to just get the first item and I just need the information from the approvers column which is my person type field multi select and next I have a select data operation and here I'm just grabbing the claims token of the array of approvers next I update the item with the status pending add information in the approval history column for the approvers column I'm setting its value as the output of select next I have my counter variable then I'm looping through my approvers. In this, I check to see if the status is not rejected. I start my approval action. For the assigned to, I'm using the email address of the approver that is captured in this array variable of approvers, which has the person type column information. So I only needed the email. That's what I've grabbed here. Then I also grab the response of the approval i'm storing that in a variable called approval history if the outcome is not equal to approved then i'm setting the status outright as rejected if the approver approves it i go ahead and set the status and the approval history and the status in this case is set to approved only if this is the last approver in my thread of approvers so let's take marketing as an example two approvers here Sarah and James so I will create a new expense item I've put in the details here I can even attach receipts as attachments I'll click save here I can see the details of the new request that I just put in the flow has triggered it's gone ahead and set my approvers currently the task is pending to Sarah Sarah gets the approval notification let's say Sarah goes ahead and approves this submits the approval response back in SharePoint we can see live how the status indicator reflects that Sarah did approve this and now the task is pending for James's response I even have an approval timeline here if I was to select this it has the complete details right here and this is the approval history column signed in as James let's say James also goes ahead and approves this once the decision is recorded live here in SharePoint we can look at that approval timeline moving ahead and the status changing to green and that completes the approval process if any approver rejects it we can even see which approver in the thread of approvers had rejected it if you enjoyed this video then do like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you so much for watching